We all should know by now that big tech and its thought police wannabes are making a mad grab for power and control over we the little people, who they hope to shepherd into a new Marxist utopia that has them as overlords and us as dependent domesticated cattle or, as they often like to call us, human resources. And while this situation tends to agitate and anger reasonable people who still have two or more brain cells to rub together, there are many good reasons for good people to actually applaud the attempted crackdown by big tech. I know this may sound crazy, but hear me out. I've got a few points, a few thoughts I just want to share. Number one, their headlong plunge into Orwellian thought and speech control is not being implemented from a place of confidence. This is very important to understand. They're not confident. They're motivated by fear. They are desperate. They know that the very technologies that have made them fortunes and put them in their present positions of relative power are the same technologies that with each passing day reduce their chance of attaining the total control that they dream of and require. They're like the desperate tyrant wannabe in Star Wars who tightens his grip only to find more and more rebel systems slipping through his fingers and into freedom, a place of freedom from which they can build and eventually overthrow and destroy the tyrant. Which leads us nicely into point number two that I'd like to make right here. Um, the attempted crackdowns by Marxist globalist tools like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are propelling the growth of alternative platforms like MeWe, Minds, Gab, Parler, and BitChute in ways that were previously unimaginable. These free thought promoting platforms are surging now and will continue to do so at an accelerating rate, even more so as the Illuminati wannabes at Big Tech continue their desperate crackdowns. And that's what they are. They are desperate. We should not be desperate. We should not be panicky, healthy and concerned and paying attention. Of course, we want to be doing what we need to do, but they're the desperate ones in this scenario. We can't lose sight of that. They're making a mad dash desperate grab for power and it won't work ultimately. The third point I wanted to, to make here and, and have on our minds as we're engaging with this incredible situation that's unfolding is that these power grabs by psychotic leftist inquisitor types in big tech only fan the flames of decentralization that are already sweeping through and reshaping the culture. The trend toward decentralization in media, education, and even in government is growing by the day and is only amplified by every abuse of centralized power modeled by the yahoos and big tech and big government. And we're seeing a whole lot of that right now. So while I know it's a lot to endure and it's very frustrating in a lot of ways, we have to appreciate the one, one of the many big, huge positives here in all of this craziness on the part of big tech and big government is they are shouting to the world the need for us to decentralize power in these areas. They know that decentralization is the real world trend that is destined to overtake them. This is why they're terrified, this is why they're desperate, and this is why they're making a last ditch effort to stop the unstoppable wave of decentralization that they are beginning to see very clearly on the horizon. If you haven't already set up shop on the rising decentralized platforms mentioned earlier, please do so now and connect with me on each and every one of them. And uh, send me an email cluing me in on any new platforms that I ought to be moving on to. I think diversification and decentralization go hand in hand here in a beautiful, powerful way that we can and will use to put the smack down on these lunatics who are literally trying to take over the world. I mean, you got to kind of laugh. I know sometimes it's a if you don't laugh, you'll cry scenario, but that's the level of crazy we're dealing with, the level of hatred. They want you quiet. They want you done, squelched. They want you to shut up, put on your mask, pay your taxes, be good cattle, human resources, and obey without question. That's why they're doing what they're doing now and why they would do much worse if they had more power than they do now. And uh, while we're enduring a lot right now, let's not lose sight of the fact that in the long run, they know the gig is up. They know that's why they're acting in such a desperate manner now. So let's have some calm, some cool, some confidence, and let's just continue to build our networks and strengthen them in all of the many and ever increasing places that they can't touch. 
Uh, also just remember, and this is very important, the big picture thing, the bad guys are not winning. Even now when it feels like, oh man, they're doing all the, like today as I'm recording this, you know, it's January 8th and this will be a legendary day for the, the amount of uh, free speech purging that's going on right now online. Coordinated effort by these tech giant lunatics to try desperately to get some control over communication. They're, they are doing everything they possibly can and it's nowhere near enough Ultimately, it is not. The territory that they're claiming for the moment is much more like a German victory in the Battle of the Bulge. I mean, it looks and feels like a big deal in the moment, of course, but if we take the time to survey the broader context, it's easy to see how weak, overextended, and desperate our enemies really are. If you're with me on this, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and connect with me on all of the social media platforms linked below. We will win.